Hello everyone, my name is Adam Cross and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Southern California and today I want to talk to you about receiving God's love. Uh, recently I was reading through Joseph Pieper's book uh, called Leisure the Basis of Culture. I was reading it again. I had a friend who is going uh, to get his master's in counseling to become a uh, a counselor, a uh, Catholic counselor, and so part of his course was reading through this book, and um, so I was like, yeah, I'll read this chapter and we can talk about it. And really kind of what stood out to me from rereading uh, Peeper's book um, on leisure was the necessity to receive God's love. Um, and, and maybe I've talked about it before in, in videos, but one of the things that really struck me about that was as humans, and, and Peter talks about this, we question anything that is free. If someone comes to our door and says, hey, we got this great deal for you, it's always, what's the catch, right? And as much as we don't want to admit that, that is how we approach God's love most of the time. Because we're so used to human uh, <laughs> error and human sin and this ability to use one another, um, unfortunately, that we end up assuming that God is like that too in a lot of ways. And so what will happen is when we hear about God's love or we we really actually he, like hear and are able to receive the fullness of God's love, we can question it because we're like, oh, what's the catch, right? What do I have to do in order to get that love? And that's been a huge thing for me in, in my personal spiritual life because I remember my spiritual director a few years ago, uh, he, you know, he, he saw how busy I was and he saw everything I was doing and how I really wasn't happy and I, w I wasn't able to find peace or contentment. And he said, Adam, you need to stop doing and you need to just be more. And I was like, okay, great. How do I do that? Right? And he looked at me and he's like, Adam, you need to stop doing and you need to just be. <laughs> I was like, awesome. How do I do that? <laughs> Give me some things to do. So the idea of just receiving God's grace and his love was really challenging for me. One of the things that I really loved and really helped me to receive God's love in a new way uh, was going through the Encounter School of Ministry summer intensive uh, a few months ago. And one of the things they really drove home was having not a human mindset, Right, as Peter, uh, Peter does when, you know, Jesus talks about his his crucifixion um, and resurrection. Right, and Jesus says, "Get behind me, Satan." When Peter says, "That's not going to happen," we can get stuck having this human mindset. But in Encounter Ministries, really focuses on having a heavenly mindset, knowing that we are heirs to the kingdom. We are sons and daughters of a heavenly Father, and so beginning to think about our lives in terms of God's abundance, and so. Part of that is being able to just receive an inheritance that God wants to pour out and give us. And scripture does talk about this, right? And, and, and it talks about so many good things that await us. You know, in the father's house and the prodigal son, there is music and dancing, right? Like God is, God is preparing and building a home for us in heaven for him because he wants to be with us so bad. And there's nothing we can do that's going to, earn that, right? Or make that a thing. It's not like, <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're not uh, putting money in a savings account and God's withdrawing it to build a house. God is building a place for us in heaven because he wants us there as a, as a father, as a, a, you know, as a parent loves a child unconditionally. We don't have to do anything. God is just building that for us because he's a good, good father. So we get to receive that. And so, you know, Encounter Ministry is really focused on, you know, part of receiving is, is we get to ask, we get to ask our good father and we get to wait and see what he wants to give us. And sometimes he wants to give us really good things right then and there. Sometimes he's saying not yet, uh, but it's a good, good father who knows what's best for us, who wants to pour out that inheritance upon us. And so we have to trust in him. But the other part of receiving is, is listening for God's word, right? Again, we don't have to do anything. And as Catholics, this can be tough because we think, oh, you know, you have to be some weird charismatic uh, person to, to think you can hear God's voice or, you know, you're having prophecies or anything like that. But in our baptism, we share in Christ's role as priest, prophet, and king. 
So part of that being a prophet means that we can hear God's voice. We can hear the Father's voice. But oftentimes we aren't listening to it. We're not cultivating that. You know, God speaks to us to, through scripture. He's going to speak to us through his creation. He's going to speak to us through other people. Are we listening? Are we actually giving God the chance and saying, you know what? God might be trying to tell me something here. If I keep hearing this thing, if something's building me up, if something is reminding me of the truth of the gospel, maybe that's God. Maybe this is coming from God, right? God, uh, God created so many good things and, and we have the word of God that is living as a person of Christ working in our lives. So we can receive, we can listen for God's voice and I could probably do a whole nother video on that. Uh, but I would point you to encounter school ministry, which is awesome. Does a great job of going into that. I won't go into that all today, but my point is that we get to receive God's love. We also get to just receive God's voice. We don't have to do anything. You think about Lexio Divina, right? Lexio Divina is reading a passage of scripture, the living word of God. Uh, we get to read it and ask, what stands out to me? What word or phrase stands out to me? We reread it and we say, God, what are you trying to speak to me through this passage? We read it a third time. We can ask, God, what are you wanting me to do or become in light of this? And we don't have to do something to get that. We don't, we don't have to earn or prove that we can hear God's voice. But if we, if we spend time and give that time to receive, then we can hear God's voice. We can receive something. And I think we just have to look at that in the broader scheme of our lives is that God wants us to do good works, of course. And we share and we participate in, in his good merits or the merits of Jesus Christ when we perform good works. But we have to look at our lives and say, am I allowing myself to just receive God's love? Can I find that rest? Because if God's love is freely given, then we're able to just rest and, and accept what our good, good father is giving us. We don't have to sweat it. We don't have to, you know, you don't have to achieve something out of pressure. We can just accept that God is giving us something really, really good. We can receive that. You know, it, it's interesting looking at the complementarity of, of man and woman. God created Adam and Eve, um, and they have different roles and they reflect God in different ways. But, you know, even reflecting on Jesus coming as a man, right? He, he is coming as a man and he is the bridegroom, right? Jesus is the groom. He is giving as a man gives to his bride. And who is the bride? The bride is the church. And so as the bride of Christ, as the body of Christ, the church, we are called to receive what God wants to give us. We don't have to do anything to do that. <laughs> Sharing in Christ's role as a prophet uh, means that when we hear God's voice, God's voice is going to always build us up. You know, you look at what Jesus came to do here on earth. And he was building the kingdom of God. He was sharing the good news about the kingdom and he was healing people. So that means that God heals. God builds us up. He's not going to degrade. He's not going to put us down. And so if we're trying to foster and cultivate an ability to hear God's voice, we have to keep that in mind that God's not going to tear us down. He's going to build us up. He's going to encourage us to follow him. He's going to invite us to do something new, to do something good. Right? Maybe step out of our comfort zone a little bit, but he's going he's gonna to encourage us. He's going to build us up. And the other thing too, you know, again, when we're listening for God's voice, uh, if God tells me as a married man to, you know, go leave my, you know, <laughs> leave my wife and my, my children and, you know, I don't know, go start a, you know, a football team, th there's some problem there, right? Because he's called me to a vocation to love and he's probably not going to call me to just get up and leave that right now. We also have to look at, you know, what we're hearing from God, does it correspond with what church teaches? Does it correspond with our understanding um, of God's call for us in our lives? Is it, is it, you know, in line with where God is calling us in our discernment process and where, you know, where we're at? And so when we listen for God's voice, God's voice is not going to contradict scripture. It's not going to contradict church teaching, or it's not going to contradict our vocation either, right? So, um, so we can be receptive to how God is talking to us. We just want to keep those things in mind. God is going to build us up and it's always going to be in line with scripture and church teaching as we listen to God's voice. I'm just going to invite you right now to just take a deep breath with me. We're just going to do just a very simple reflection and just invite God in to receive. So let's, let's just pray right now. 
the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I just invite you to take a deep breath. We just recognize that God is here with you right now. He is giving you the air in your lungs. He is with you in your thoughts. We just pray, come Holy Spirit. We can very simply just receive God's presence and everything he's giving us. We can quiet our minds. We can look for any words or phrases that want to, that, that, that may pop into our heads, that may present themselves to us. We just pray, come Holy Spirit. And last thing I'll say is this, Jesus said, you know, you know, peace be with you, peace I give to you, not the peace of this world, but the peace from the Father. And so the peace and the rest and the receptivity, right, the stuff that God wants to give us in our receptivity, um, it's not of this world. Anytime we need it, we can pray, God, I need your peace. Peace isn't the absence of stress, it's, it's the presence of God's grace, true, true peace, right? Uh, so we can rely on God's grace. We can receive his grace in those moments. We can invite him in um, and just receive. That can be hard, but the challenge would be this. In your day, think of, think of opportunities in prayer um, or even just taking a deep breath, stopping, to just invite God in, to just receive him as the bridegroom, uh, to invite him into your life and just to receive whatever he wants to give you through the power of the Holy Spirit in some real way each day. So if you have any questions on that, <laughs> please leave them below. If you have any comments, video ideas, I would love to hear them. But otherwise, please give this video a like and a share. Um, and thank you so much for watching and God bless.